We move now to another committee report, shoeing and hoof care. I must say that uh, the romantic image of the village blacksmith being the wise old soul who does what he's been doing for 100 years and does it the same way, that may have endured through the image of, uh, of, of the, the craft of the blacksmith. In working with the farriers on this, uh, however, I've been really struck by the, the intellectual curiosity, the uh, devotion to the idea of getting better, the willingness to look at what they've been doing and see if it can be improved. And I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with, with the help that we've been getting, especially under the, leader, the leadership of Mitch Taylor, who is our next speaker. He is a certified journeyman farrier of the American Farriers Association, and he directs all instruction at the Kentucky Horseshoeing School. So he is really attuned to getting knowledge and passing it along. Mr. Taylor has been a professional farrier and an avid competitor in international horseshoeing competitions since 1975. And I think if we can have bass fishing and poker on ESPN, surely we can have horseshoeing competitions. So, Mitch Taylor. <clears throat> Thank you. Those are nice words, but um, I, get, I was supposed to speak second uh, today, and, and, and but as a horseshoe, I'm kind of used to being pushed to the end of the line, so we'll get through this quickly. Um, our committee, the Shoeing and Hoof Care Committee, is made up of um, a wide variety of um, <clears throat> very reputable people, as you can see by the slide. Bill Kasner, who is the chair, is not able to be with us today, so I'll be uh, giving this report for you. We've met um, on a regular basis um, this year, and we have d discussed uh, uh, all of these uh, recommended actions for consideration <clears throat> uh, over the last year. And um, as you can see, that we've, uh, our primary goals are to, to provide some education for owners and trainers on shoeing and hoof care. Uh, we decided to uh, look at some of the um, anecdotal um, evidence that was out there on how horses move and how different shoeing um, affects them. So we, we decided to take some high-speed video and I'll be showing you some of that later on. Uh, we decided that uh, looking at the work of, uh, of some, some researchers um, that have presented some really credible data over the years that we needed to really take a good hard look at the, um, what, what effect that shoeing and, and shoe modifications and specifically traction devices were having on uh, the long-term soundness of the animal. So we decided to um, uh, see if we could get rid of at least toe grabs on the front feet of horses, um, uh, at least on the, uh, in this country. We decided to <clears throat> take a look at um, how people are trained and then um, to get the word out um, to the general public on, on uh, shoeing and foot care issues that, that maybe they didn't know. What we've, done, what we've been doing is, <clears throat> over this last year's, given various presentations. Um, <clears throat> Bill Kasner gave a presentation to the RCI in April, uh, and I believe that was in um, uh, Jackson Hole. And uh, through the work of, or through the, that committee, uh, they decided to make a model rule that eliminate, that we should eliminate the use of toe grabs on the front feet of racehorses, uh, anything over four millimeters. And in, in farrier terms, that means anything over um, a low toe. Uh, so, so that means that a regular toe and a quarter horse toe would be um, <clears throat> eliminated on the front feet of racehorses. There's been various educational publications. Um, <clears throat> myself and Steve Norman and Bill Kasner presented a, um, a little seminar up in Saratoga this year, uh, being invited by Fran Yerga at, their, uh, at the sales this fall. Uh, I, I did a presentation down at the fourth annual Lamina Symposium in 2007. And then uh, Steve Norman also did a, a radio interview here lately with Ursula Ellis. Here's just a, a couple um, uh, publications that were out uh, in the Horseman's Update. Uh, the bloodhorse.com uh, had, had some uh, information that they were putting out. Uh, the research today put an article out on the uh, model rule that was developed uh, uh, at the RCI on toe grabs. And just some, some various um, articles that were out there trying to inform the general public about the importance of uh, proper what we call balance shoeing. So, 
This is the rule, uh, is that uh, toe grabs greater than four millimeters are, should be prohibited on the front feet of racehorses. These are the states so far that have adopted that and, uh, and now have um, eliminated that, the, that, those types of shoes on the, at least the front feet of racehorses. So I decided to put some pictures in. We went through um, to try to get Bill ready for this presentation up in Jackson Hole. We decided to take some um, static pictures to make the point of what toe grabs are actually doing. So we took a, a cadaver limb and a race racehorse limb and shoot it with a queen's plate, which has no toe grabs, and then we shoot it with a, a regular toe, which has a six millimeter toe grab. And then we applied um, the same amount of weight um, uh, through the loading process. And this just indicates what the static phase or the loading phase, uh, uh, the changes that occur when we add six millimeters of lift on the toe. And as we put 300 pounds on, which would demonstrate uh, a standing horse, and then we put 2,000 pounds down, you can see that, that um, what has happened as uh, the definite change in the angulation of the coffin joint and the over dorsiflexion of the fetlock joint, which can be fairly directly correlated to uh, suspensory and uh, injuries and fatal musculoskeletal injuries. So what happens is the toe grabs really affect the way that the phalanges or the long pasture and short pasture and coffin bone are supposed to load during these loading phases. And this just gives a pretty good indication of, of uh, what's going on. Looks like we've got two slides that are out of place. Let's go back and redo that. So that's um, 300 pounds. There's, a, there's a, the middle range there at 1,000 pounds. And you can see the, uh, uh, the picture on the right, the fetlock, the bottom of the fetlock is dropped down more with the same weight on it as the picture on the left has. So I guess what it comes down to is in this race industry, in this race game, that we're asking these horses to function at their design capacity or, or function to their limitations of their, of their musculoskeletal system. And that's fine until we, we get things out of balance, whether that be um, improper shoeing or, or um, unskilled shoeing or we do things like adding toe grabs. And once we exceed the design capacity of uh, the system, catastrophic things happen. And so I thought this series of slides was a, was a pretty good um, um, visual of what happens when things go bad. And when we have things go bad on racehorses, since they do function at such high speeds, we, we sometimes have some fairly catastrophic injuries. So I guess what I'd like to do is to um, show you some of the other work that we've been doing. And we decided to um, kind of have a preliminary study, and we've used high-speed videos to uh, demonstrate the differences between um, toe grabs and queen's plates or barefoot horses on different, different surfaces. What I decided to do was to, to get a group of horses and to get some kind of a baseline is to film them on, um, on a track with no cushion, and we got permission from the Red Mile to take some horses out there and, and gallop them around. So we did this as a baseline first, and then we took them to uh, Keeneland and um, to, to, an, to another dirt track and did the filming with the same horses. So I thought it might be interesting to show you that um, and end the uh, report with that. So let me, let me get over to the other. While Mitch is making this adjustment and switching, uh, if you have any questions, go ahead, please, and raise your cards, and uh, someone will come and pick them up, and we'll, uh, we'll have them available to, uh, to uh, discuss. OK. So this is um, what, what, we, what I had to switch over here is because this is <clears throat> a software that, that's on my computer, so I had to kind of get to it. But basically what we've done is um, we've taken these horses and tried to get some baseline. This is at the Red Mile first. Um, and this is a horse with barefoot. Um, he's galloping. He's, um, we actually had in, in some of these instances the uh, Lexington police uh, come out with their radar gun and, and um, get a uh, speed on, on the horses. So we've got a lot of these videos that are 
that we have with, a, with the actual speed on them. So this guy's running, galloping um, anywhere between 30 and 33 miles an hour. And what we did was we're measuring three things. So I wanted to measure the amount of slide phase that happens when the foot hits the ground. And, and it's really important that during the, the dynamics of the gate that the foot, when the foot hits the ground, it does slide a little bit to, to dissipate some of the shock. Um, and so we measured this in millimeters. Also wanted to measure the dorsiflexion of the, of the fetlock joint, and that's what the, the, um, the top angulation here measures, the angle of the fetlock joint, and the bottom one measures the angulation of the coffin joint. And I wanted to see this between, uh, and I want to see the effects that toe grabs had on this, on, on hard surface and on dirt and on uh, synthetic surface. So you can see that if we run this through, through the slow motion um, uh, camera, and I th th this is generally filmed uh, depending on the light, but these are between 1,000 and 1,500 uh, frames per second. And we put some markers on the foot and are on the leg and what we try to do is to get to get some consistency is to see what these various angles were so if we take a look at a barefoot horse on hard ground traveling at a gallop he's his slide phase was about 18 millimeters he had about 110 to inside 110 degrees inside angle of the fetlock joint which is right here and he had about 150 degrees in his in his coffin joint so if we go the same horse and the same speed with the difference, the only difference being the toe grab, you can see that he's changed the um, slide phase, has decreased from 18 to about 12. You can see the, the snow plow effect uh, of the toe grab as it pushes dirt forward. And we've actually increased the angulation of the fetlock joint about 10 degrees, and we've actually increased the, the, the angulation of the um, coffin joint too. So these two distal joints are, are actually are flexing more, and uh, whenever we've got an increased flexion of the fetlock joint in particular, that's when things like suspensory strains and, and superficial flexor tendon problems and proximal sesamoid bone problems and all of these injuries we see with the um, with the uh, suspensory apparatus uh, go, go wrong in this stage right here. So right here, we see we've got an increased angle of the fetlock joint, we've got an increased angulation of the coffin joint, a decreased slide phase. So basically we've got the same velocity, the same momentum that's being um, hampered. So the slide phase is hampering, it is being decreased, and the joints, are the joints and the bones are taking up a lot of the shock. So if we take a look at this on a, um, on a dirt track and take a look at normal movement with a, a barefoot horse, again, and at least on these three measurements, we didn't see a lot of difference with, the, um, with a queen's plate and a barefoot. So, so I used a, a barefoot a model here rather than a queen's plate. And what we can see is we've got an increased slide phase of about 52 millimeters now, and we're, we're back up to uh, a normal fetlock joint angle at 110, and we're at 145 degrees coffin joint, which is, if you remember, the, the barefoot horse was 150, the toe grab was 140, this is right in between, and we see this normal wedging of the, of the foot, which is normal in a, in a, in a sand racetrack. And so it seems to be a lot more uniform and a lot more of a normal uh, movement pattern here. If we take this same horse and, and now put a toe grab on him, we can see we've decreased the slide phase down to 45 millimeters. We've also caused more dorsiflexion or more flexion in the, in the fetlock joint from, uh, from 110 to 103, and we've also increased the angulation of the coffin joint. <clears throat> so the, 
the snow plow effect if the toe grab is, is stopping the slide phase, causing the toe to dig in, causing more angulation in the coffin joint, and there's also a lot more tension on the structures of the back of the leg, this, the, uh, which are the suspensory ligament and the uh, superficial flexor tendon in, in the difference between toe grab and barefoot. Now, just another view of um, some horses working, and I thought it was interesting because we had one with a toe grab and, and one that had a queen's plate. And if you look at these two, which are, which are breezing, actually working at working speed, um, I think the, the, uh, the snowplow effect again here is, is noted in the, in the bay horse on the rail by the increased amount of, of dirt that's pushed forward um, as he hits the ground, which is a good comparison to the horse, the gray horse who doesn't have a toe grab in. And you can see a visual there of uh, not quite as much of that dirt being pushed forward in, in front of the hoof, which is just kind of indicative of a lot more of uh, a lot more stress that that foot and the lower leg is having to go through. We did take some some other films of some synthetic surfaces and uh, Rogers Beasley was nice enough to let us come out and um, film out there at a Keenan at the main track and also we were able to film at the on the at the 5H training track and Although these are, are different distances away, you know, it's really difficult to get um, out on that <clears throat> training track um, or, or out on the, uh, the track when they're training because of the, the um, chance of causing, you know, a change in the training with the horses. So, but um, we were able to get at least um, several dozen shots of different horses going by. And I think that the main thing that we saw a difference between them these, uh, synth th this poly track and the synthetic track, the, also the, the, the shorter track um, that they use for training, is that the, the slide phase is still decreased. And I want to bring this, this, this picture up here a little bit just to show you an interesting, an interesting thing that we were able to see that occurs on most, most of the uh, synthetic tracks that we saw. I can zoom in here. And I don't know if this has, um, don't know quite what to think of this other than Maybe there's some relationship here to some soft tissue problems that we may, that we see. If you take a look at the angulation of the hoof capsule there, you can see the extreme amount of, of flexion in the coffin joint or where the hoof is actually almost upright. Can you see that? So it's interesting that we see that, that phenomena occurring on the, uh, on the synthetic tracks. Whereas if we take a look at another horse galloping with a queen's plate, you can see that his um, angulation when he's loaded is, is right at um, normal 53 degrees and doesn't tend to, the foot doesn't tend to tip up like that because it's allowed to slide through the dirt a little bit more normal. So we've got a lot of videos. Um, from a lot of uh, probably four different tracks. Um, I think that this, this information is just, it's not scientific um, at all, but it is a good preliminary study that I think probably warrants some further investigation. And in order to get this done, you know, it takes money and research uh, people. We need to get together with some scientists um, that are willing to look at this and help design a proper experimental protocol so that this can actually be um, credible information that, that we can take to the bank rather than just more anecdotal evidence. So we've got a little bit of preliminary information here that shows that there definitely is a, uh, a relationship between how feet interact with the, with the, with the track uh, between uh, with and without toe grabs, I guess, is, is the main 
point that we're trying to say. So we'd certainly like to to uh, investigate this a little bit further with the, within this committee, along with the other work that we've got to get done. So thank you very much.